Hello everyone, I'm Phil, and this is a second video in the series on assembly language programming. Last time, we learned how to install FASM and write a Hello World program. And this time, what we're going to do is go over a little bit about um, things I did not explain in the program. For example, what are registers and why do we use them? Uh, what happens when we declare bytes and what are these commands? Where do they come from? It turns out to be useful uh, in assembly language programming you have to understand uh, some minimal details about uh, the architecture that you're working with. In this case we're working with the x86-64 architecture and that uh, processor, that CPU has something called registers, which we're using here, and it has something called commands, which we're using here, and it also has memory. And so we're going to talk about all three things. Let's start with registers. Registers are essentially small pieces of memory. And I'm going to draw um, an illustration, my illustration of registers. And the x86-64 architecture actually has 16 registers. And registers are these little bits of memory. And at the top level, they're, they're named, they have names, actually. R15, R14, R13, R12, R11, R10. R9, R8. Now you'd think the rest of them would go R7 down to R0. However, the first eight registers uh, have history in 32 and 16 bit processors, previous processors, and they have different names. In x86, they have names um, called RAX. RBX, RCX, RDX, um, RSP, RBP, RSI, and RDI. And these names actually originate from the history of the processor. So the RAX register um, was actually based, um, was the accumulator, and C was a counter, and SP was the stack pointer, and B was the base pointer, and, and SI was the, um, the stack index, and so forth. Um, Today they're more general purpose, but they can still they still have some of their old purposes. So we can still some of the arithmetic that happens it will store in the R, in the RAX register. Um, there's some counting stuff that goes on in some um, calls that we make, and that happens in the RCX and and so forth. But in general, we have 16 registers to play with. And in 64-bit architecture, they are 64 bits wide. So each register can hold 8 bytes. And we can also address uh, or access only pieces of a register if we want. We can access the first byte or the first 2 bytes for 16 bits and the first 4 bytes for 32 bits. And that's what registers are. Registers are very fast and uh, they allow the, uh, the computer to do um, from these registers the computer can take the data and perform arithmetic on them comparisons and uh, load and store them to memory <clears throat> now speaking of memory memory is just an array of bytes and actually they can be kind of thought of as uh, little one byte registers um, this is the RAM that's in your computer, and the addresses go from 0, uh, 
and one, two, three, all the way up to however many bytes you have in your installed on your computer. So if you have four gigabytes of RAM, you have somewhere north of four billion bytes of addressable memory. And this is available to your CPU. And you can load information to and from the registers to memory. And between these two things, our registers and our memory, uh, we use those things a lot in assembly language programming. Now the only other thing I need to talk about here are these commands like LEA and MOV and syscall and ZOR. There are arithmetic operators like add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And these commands um, are understood only by the assembler. Um, it turns out that processors do not understand words like we do. They understand numbers. So in a computer, everything must be a number. So when we run our assembler, it takes all of this text and turns it into numbers that the computer can read. Now there's a special portion of the processor called the control unit. And what the control unit does is it looks at numbers and it, it interprets them. It, it, uh, it decodes them into actions. So LEA is a number and the control unit will see the number for LEA and then know what to do with the next two numbers. And if the control unit sees MOV, it knows what to do with the next two numbers and, and so forth. So every command is actually a number. And so our assembly, our assembler program, actually takes all this text and turns it into numbers which the computer can understand. So um, all of this, um, computer processors, are very complicated there's there's much more to this than what I've said here um, and it's it's not as simple as 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 everything I've said so um, for example the operating system abstracts away physical memory so you actually can't address uh, if you give your program the address 3 you may not actually get physical address 3 so if you're interested in this, there's a lot of information out there, um, and it's it's very interesting. But for to being a minimal uh, assembly language programmer, all you need to know about are the existence of these uh, registers. You need to know that your declaring of bytes, um, your declaring of bytes actually gives you some memory. Uh, that you're allocating and then you need to know these commands and so with those three things uh, you can be you can start to work in assembly language programming and that's all I wanted to cover for today um, thank you guys for watching and next time we'll expand on this hello world program and make it uh, more generalized